Let's say we have an application where we allow the users to book a seat, for example, in a movie theater. In this case, our application is multi threaded, so we are allowing multiple users, each having a single thread, to access the application simultaneously. Now, if two threads try to access and book the same seat, it's going to be an issue. One of the solutions to this problem is we allow only one thread to book a seat at a time. And for this, let's introduce this concept of lock. In this case, we have four threads on the left hand side and all four of them are trying to book the seat simultaneously. So they all try to attempt to acquire the lock. We are going to allow only one thread to get that lock at a time. And only the owner of the lock who has acquired the lock is able to access this seat chart. So in this case, let's say thread one was able to acquire the lock. That is why thread one is the owner of the lock and it's allowed to proceed and book a particular seat. Since all the other threads, the three threads, also wanted to get access to that lock and the lock is currently not in their position, it's with someone else, these three threads will go into the wait state. The thread one, which is the owner, will book the seat and will release the lock. Once it releases the lock, all the other threads which were in the waiting state can become runnable now because the lock is not in position of anyone. So now the other three threads can try to access the lock again. All of these three will try to attempt to acquire the lock again. And let's say in this case, only thread two will be able to get the lock. Again, since thread two has the lock, only thread two can access this seat chart and do the booking. The other two threads will go into the wait state. Thread two will book this particular seat and will release the lock. Once a lock is released, the other two threads, the remaining threads, which were in the waiting state because the lock was not available, will now come back into the runnable state because the now the lock is available. And that is the whole functionality of locks. Locks allow you to restrict the access to a shared resource such that only one thread can access that resource. So in a multi-threaded application, when there are multiple threads and you want to update a resource, but there could be a problem if there are multiple threads updating the resource simultaneously, then you can use the lock to restrict the access to only one thread at a time. In terms of code, we create an object called lock of type reentrant lock. So we say lock equal to new reentrant lock. We have these four threads, T1, T2, T3, and T4. We are starting them pretty much simultaneously, and all of them will try to access the resource, which is a simple method here. In the method, we are saying that this particular block between the lock and unlock methods is where we will access our shared resource. So even if all four threads, T1 to T4, call this at the same time, only one will get the access to the lock. And let's say in this case, only T1 gets the lock and all the three other threads do not get the lock. So at this point, T1 will proceed, it will access the resource. The other three threads will go into the waiting state. Once the T1 calls the unlock method, now the lock is available to other three threads and the same thing which we saw in the earlier diagrams will happen. If you have seen the synchronized keyword in Java, this is very similar to synchronized. In synchronized, we could have said that synchronized on this, which is this current object, and we have an open curly braces and a closed curly braces indicating that this is where we are going to access the shared resource. So synchronized opening brace is similar to log.log .log, and closing brace is similar to log.unlock. The difference between the lock and synchronized keyword is synchronized is implicit. So let's assume that instead of synchronized into bracket this, you could have just made the method itself as synchronized. So in this case, 
it is an implicit lock because we are not creating a new field or a new variable so the synchronized is implicit and locks are explicit because we have to create a variable for it locks has some extra features so for example if you have four locks for some reason right let's say you have lock a b c and d and you want to ensure that all four locks are acquired by a thread to access some resource now with synchronized you have to have the open bracket and the closing bracket in the same scope right that's how java works but in case of locks you can acquire the lock in one method you can release the lock in other method and if you have four locks let's say a b c d you can acquire them in any order and you can release them in any order so you gain that flexibility in locks and the last thing is lock has few extra methods like try lock and try lock with a timeout which we'll see at the latter part of the video so coming back to the example a very simple we create a lock of type new entry entrant lock whenever we want to access the shared resource above that we'll do the lock operation after accessing the resource we'll do an unlock operation the problem is what if there is an exception when we are trying to access the resource if there is an exception and we have not caught it then this unlock method will never be called so the lock will never be unlocked and the other threads which went into the waiting state will never become runnable again which is a big problem and that is why it is always advisable to have a try catch finally or a try finally and within the finally block call the unlock method this will ensure that no matter what happens during accessing the resource you will always unlock your locks and other threads can continue their processing okay so why is the name of this class reentrant lock so we'll we'll start with something simple so reentrant lock allows you to call the lock method multiple times on the same object so here we are calling the lock method twice of course the number of unlock calls also has to match the same calls as lock and to know how many times have you called the lock method there is a method called get hold count which will give you that particular count so in this case that count will be 2 yeah but let's take more practical example let's say between the lock and unlock methods we are updating the shared resource but based on some condition we want to again recursively call the same method so let's say thread 1 has the lock updated the resource and it called the same method again it will try to call the lock method again thread 1 already has the lock so it is trying to re enter the block that it already has access to and that is why it is called a re entrant block yes behind the scenes it doesn't have to acquire the lock again because it's already owner of the lock yes so behind the scenes only thing that happens is its hold count the get held count that increases from 1 to 2 and if there is another recursion it will get updated to 3 and so on and so forth the reentrant lock allows you a constructor to pass in a boolean variable of true or false if you say true that reentrant lock becomes a fair lock let's say there are four threads all trying to acquire the lock and thread 1 arrives or makes the call earlier in this case thread 1 will get the lock and the other threads will go into the wait state in the wait state it is put into a wait queue once the thread 1 calls the unlock method it releases the lock and one of these threads will get a chance to acquire the lock since thread 2 has waited the longest for acquiring the lock the reentrant lock will allow a better chance or it will guarantee that thread 2 will acquire the lock instead of thread 3 and thread 4 yes so it's a first come first serve basis and there is an concept of barge in which applies to unfair locks so by default the locks are unfair and you can explicitly also make it unfair by passing the boolean variable as false in this case if the current thread is thread 1 which is also the owner of the lock and there are other threads 2 3 and 4 waiting for the lock if 
thread one calls the unlock method and at the same time if there is a thread five which is trying to acquire the lock now instead of pushing it into the queue and picking it from the queue what reentrant lock which is unfair will do is it will allow thread five to acquire the lock yeah so thread two three and four are still in the wait queue even though they were here the longest but to promote speed the reentrant lock allowed thread five to acquire the lock first yes so it's unfair but it's fast so if it's a fair lock we'll ensure that there is no thread starvation every thread will get an equal opportunity but it's slightly slower because it has to use the queues if it's an unfair lock it will be faster but it is possible that some of your threads will wait a very long time into the wait queue now the extra methods that we spoke about that the lock has one of the methods is called try lock try lock as the name suggests is just saying that try to get the lock and let me know if you acquired it so it returns a value boolean value if it's true that means you have the lock access and you can access the resource of course you do it in try finally and then unlock but if you couldn't access the lock do not go into the wait state do not block let's do something else yeah so if you want your thread to not block when you cannot get the lock then you can use this try lock so try lock returns a false because the lock is not available it's with someone else fine we'll do something else so it will come into the else block and you can do the alternate stuff and you can also do this try lock with a timeout so you can say try to acquire this lock block or wait for 5 seconds and let me know if you acquired it within those 5 seconds even if after 5 seconds you didn't acquire it let's do something else if within those 5 seconds you acquired it let's access the resource there is one weird thing with try lock is even if your reentrant lock is fair the try lock doesn't honor the fairness so if you say try lock and the lock is just being released by someone else try lock will barge in and get the lock even though if there are other threads in the waiting state the work around for this is use a try lock with a timeout of 0 seconds and this honors the fairness of the lock and this should have been a new reentrant lock true because we want the lock to be fair and the last part is it has a few methods called uh, is held by current thread which gives you true or false if it is if the lock is held by the current thread and it also gives you the length of that wait queue how many threads are waiting on that lock these both methods are generally used only for debugging or testing purposes they are not really very practical and there is a very important concept of conditions and locks which i have a different video about which can see right here thanks a lot for watching if you have any questions let me know and uh, see you in the next one thank you